Hi everyone, just a follow up to the um, video I did about this tweet by Riam Delati. This is the BBC Syria producer that has said that he can prove without a doubt that the Duma hospital scene was staged. That hospital scene where the babies were having water pulled on their heads and apparently it was sarin gas. That's what we were told at the beginning, remember? So I just want to do an update on it because I remarked two days ago. The media silence on this is deafening. They, nobody is covering it. And still, two days later, nobody from the mainstream, from the corporate or from the BBC or anything like that, from the media in this country are covering this huge event. This BBC journalist who says he can prove that that video was fake. Remember that video that led to the trilateral bombing of, of Syria? We'll get to that in a minute. Nobody's reporting on it. Nobody. Compare that to this. Do you remember when that article came out last year? Totally false, totally fabricated, can easily be debunked. I mean, he's talking about the, the most surveilled property in the United Kingdom, possibly the most surveilled property in the world, about him walking in the front door and nobody noticing. It's total a total fabrication, yet that lie went just around the world in hours everybody was writing a report about on it every man and his dog wrote a report on it everybody was talking about it in the media over here and over there in the US as well yet nobody talking about this nobody at all it's curious isn't it I find it curious because why the silence why just with the lack of reporting on the Integrity Initiative, this Orwellian organisation that's using foreign and Commonwealth funds, government funds, to smear independent journalists that have been telling you about things like the Syria attack being uh, being staged, and obviously the go going into detail on the on the on the events surrounding the Skripal poisonings that obviously the mainstream media are missing or misreporting or lying about. It's curious, isn't it? Is it because that they've been complicit in these lies? Is it because that they are complicit in it and they know it? And is it because these staged events of last year in Duma, the independent media have been saying all along, these are, this is extremely dodgy, there's no evidence here whatsoever to say that there was a chemical weapons attack. Not at all, let alone that Assad did it. But... Is it because these staged events that you cheered on in the media and at the BBC led to the bombing, the trilateral bombing of Syria and the expulsion of diplomats around the world and cemented a new Cold War with Russia and your complicity in it and you knew that that was fake but you pushed it anyway? And are we now seeing, you know, some journalists come out like Riam Delati and the other guy who The Intercept um, uh, quoted? And they're all, oh, the, the truth is going to come out because of the OPCW report that's about to come out and we're trying to get ahead of it and trying to get ahead of blame. Is that what's happening? I'm curious. I'm asking as to why the silence here. Why the silence? Why only just a couple of journalists coming out? And why is nobody covering it? If this was anything to do with Julian Assange, you can bet the Guardian would be writing about this until sunset. But is your, is your silence, is the media's silence because they know all this and they know the consequences of that, of you know their lies and their pushing this false narrative, the consequences of that actually coming out and the truth getting out are too dear for them. Is that why they're silent on it? I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely wondering. I am honestly genuinely wondering. Is it because, is it because for the last year, I, for longer, some people, some other great reporters for longer, for the last year I have been raising question after question after question about the White Helmets. This is the organisation member that you thought had such weight behind it that you took that as true because that was filmed by the white helmets we have been telling you over and over in independent media that this is an organization that is not all it seems to be this is an organization that is working 
I, or what it looks like anyway, is working hand in glove with the terrorists. Terrorists that our government obviously have funded and armed and trained. If this looks like a whole operation, is, 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 it, is your silence on this because obviously all this truth will come out as well, all the or, and things that are extremely inconvenient for you for you will come out. Is it because this will prove independent journalists all along were right, and you were wrong? Remember, let me remind you. This is what this is what Carla Ortiz found when she went to Aleppo after Aleppo was liberated. Hi everybody, I am Carla Ortiz. I am here in the city of Aleppo. We are in the headquarters of the White Helmets. We see here the main logo of the White Helmets. Over here, we see the teaching of how the White Helmets have to heal. And right above, as you can see, is the logo of ISIS. Literally a meter above it, the logo of ISIS. On the outside of the White Helmets headquarters in Aleppo. How do you explain that, media? How do you explain the fact that you haven't talked about this media? How do you explain the fact that you've been silent on these findings, media? Over here we see the flag of Al-Nusra. Al-Nusra and Al-Qaeda flags in the White Helmets building? And obviously they've been there a while, they were there before the building burned, obviously. It's the charring. And here is another flag. And here we have a jacket of the white helmets. A lot of the neighbors uh, over here have said that they were not taking care of uh, civilians, but only militants that carry weapons and fighters. Take your own conclusions. Al-Qaeda headquarters here. And just like not even two meters away, it is the White Helmets headquarters. So, and this is being found all over Syria, places that have been, you know, liberated. That the, the White Helmets headquarters are next door to Al Qaeda and Al Nusra, next door to the very people that we are supposed to be fighting. The very fi the, the very people that America have been fighting a war on terrorism for almost twenty years. Now they're funding them and arming them and sending them into other countries. We in independent media have been telling you this constantly. The media have been smearing and slandering us and now it turns out, hey, it looks like we were true all along. Is that, is it, it looks like we were accurate all along rather. And you were wrong. And you were smearing and slandering us because you were wrong and you were afraid that this was going to get exposed. Is that why you are so silent? You know, remember, by the way, when the OPCW report came out, this OPCW report here, remember the OPCW report said, no organophosphorus nerve agents or their degradation products were detected. Now straight away, straight away, this means, as Zero Hedge reported, that it demolished the narrative that the White House gave for bombing Syria. Because they said it was sounding in their press release. So it demolished it. Now remember, that also said that they cannot con uh, confidently determine whether or not a specific chemical was used as a weapon. And that, you know, we collected some chlorine as well and we'll take that for trace analysis because obviously chlorine can be found anywhere. Yet the BBC, Syria attack was chlorine gas. That is what their headline was. I, I reported on this at the time. That was what their headline was. That is a total fabrication of that report. Total fabrication. The report did not say that at all. They had to change it. Syria war, possible chlorine at Duma, attack site, watchdog. I said at the time, that is actually a misleading headline too. What they changed it to is wrong. Totally misleading. That article, by the way, these are all the corrections just on that one article so far. 
An earlier version of this article inaccurately summarised the findings of the OPCW's report. It has since been amended to clarify that their report suggests that chlorine may have been used in April's suspected chemical attack on Duma. That wasn't what the OPCW report said. They just said, we've collected some, some traces of chlorine as well, and we're going to obviously tag that and check it. That's it. It didn't say this chlorine was a possible weapon. Because the report actually said, I just underlined it, cannot confidently determine whether or not a specific chemical was used as a weapon. So that BBC headline, as I said at the time, what they changed it to was wrong. And guess what? Correction, 4th of October. The article's headline has been amended to correct a misleading impression about the conclusions of the OPCW report following a complaint. Clarification, 12th of October. Following a further investigation, the BBC's Executive Complaints Unit found the original headline to the article was materially inaccurate. Yes, it was. This is what we said at the time, and I'm glad something is being done about it at least this was a separate finding to the investigation which led to the correction posted on the 4th of october that's just the corrections on one article that they have written one article that they have written trying desperately to back up the findings from this video and trying desperately to back up the narrative that they have spun endlessly from this video which we have been saying in independent media all along is staged and fake and now finally it seems the mainstream a mainstream journalist has caught up with us whether that's to save his own skin or, or not i don't know but the media's silence on this is deafening. Imagine if, imagine if we were wrong and they knew we were wrong and they knew, can you imagine if they thought we were wrong for an instant, the backlash that we would be getting in independent media from them? Can you imagine how much they would be going overboard now, right now to disprove what we, are, we have been saying is true, but they're not. And the reason they can't do that is because what we've been saying is true. Yet we're the ones who have been attacked. We're the ones who have had our traffic strangulated by Google and Facebook at the whims of organisations such as the Atlantic Council and DFR Labs, who are funded by the very government that have been pushing these lies. I'm asking a question. What does, all, what does your silence mean? Does it mean any of this? Or does it mean all of it? And I don't just want to talk about the media here either. I want to talk about the politicians and the politicians' silence on it. Because if, think about this, just think about it. If that it does come out that that was indeed fake, and if Riam Delati can prove without a doubt that the Duma hospital scene was staged, as if we need proof right now, because all the evidence points to the fact that this was fake and we've been saying it for a year. But if it does come out and it gets into the media, into the mainstream that, that this has happened, what it demonstrates is this. Our media is absolutely rotten and corrupt to the core, including the BBC. In fact, I would say it starts with the BBC. And then obviously the Guardian, etc., Mail on Sunday, etc., etc., they all follow on behind. But it means that they are. It proves that they are corrupt to the core, and it proves that they have been lying to us all along. And independent media are the ones who have been telling the truth. This is what it proves. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, but by the way, the, the even independent journalists who have been telling you the truth through all this, remember, the mainstream media have been attacking and smearing them relentlessly. Remember, the BBC attacked Vanessa Beely. It was awful, that one article was, on the BBC trending with Sarah Abdallah that I mentioned the other day. It was awful. Are these journalists going to get an apology if this comes out? Of course not. This is why they're so silent. They don't want it to come out. But the thing is, our politicians should, especially those in the Labour Party. Remind me, what was one of the what is one of the Labour Party's key promises to the electorate? 
They're key policies. I remember covering it in a video last year. Jeremy Corbyn did a keynote speech in Scotland about it to reform the media and to help independent media and to support independent media and true honest journalism. I remember that being a big thing. What is this but a perfect opportunity for the Labour Party to be jumping up and down, screaming and, down, uh, and shouting about a corrupt media that has been pushing lies and propagandising the public? What, what is a better opportunity than to be jumping out and exposing that in order to further your promise to the British public that you would support an independent media and reform our journalism in this country. If you're not taking this opportunity, then what it says to people like me is, you're not to be trusted. Because you say lots of stuff, but when it comes time to act, and when you get a perfect opportunity to actually promote one of the very things that is a core belief of what you are presenting and telling the people that you will give us if Labour government gets in, you're silent on it too, apart from a couple of tweets that I've seen from Chris Williamson. Now, I realise that this is a delicate issue. But for God's sake, start saying something. One of you, stand up in the House of Commons and at least ask a fucking question. If you don't do this, Labour Party, if you don't use this opportunity to take this and start asking questions and start ramming home your manifesto, your, you know, your promise to reform the media and to give us media that really does inform and educates and truthful and tries to get to the facts. If you don't use this, it says to me that your promises don't mean a goddamn thing. And you're just the same. You may have a have a leader whose policies I totally agree with, but what it says to me is you have absolutely no intention, none whatsoever, of implementing the policies that you promise you're going to give us. Here is a perfect opportunity for you to expose the media for what it is, and you're missing an open goal. And people ask me, Gordon. If you, if, you're, if you respect and love Jeremy Corbyn's policy so much, why don't you join a Labour, the Labour Party? This is why. This is why. For God's sake, do something, MPs. For God's sake, say something. And as for the journalists out there, and I'm sure there are some that have worked for corporate media and haven't said anything for fear that they'll lose their jobs, grow a backbone. For God's sake, grow a backbone and come out and start telling us the truth. Because otherwise, you're just propagandists to power and you're the very reason why we need to reform the media in this country. It's just a shame that for the first couple of days at least, it seems like Labour are missing a golden opportunity to push one of their absolute cast iron promises that they have been making to the British public for over a year. It's about time you have the courage of your convictions, Labour Party, don't you think? And other members of Parliament as well, who say that they stand for free speech and a free press. And that brings me, and this is how I want to end the video, because while all this has been going on, while all this has been going on, while all this fabricated nonsense has been rammed down our throats by the BBC and the media in this country, what has happened? The one person, the one journalist, who probably could have got to the truth about this faster than anybody else could have, is locked up and arbitrarily detained by the very government right now, who is uh, propagandising and lying to its own people and then lying to them about why he's arbitrarily detained in the Ecuadorian embassy and of course I'm talking about Julian Assange this is a news 
This is news which should be on the tip of everybody's tongue in the country right now. And the fact that it isn't worries me. It worries me that not only are we living in an Orwellian nightmare, we have an opposition party that say a hell of a lot, but don't deliver on any goddamn promise they give us. And if that is the truth and they don't end up saying anything about this and it doesn't come to light what really happened there, then I'm afraid you're not going to get my support because you're no different to any other political party over the last 30 years that sold out the British public in order to protect power. For more truly honest, independent media like the video you just saw, please subscribe and click the bell below as well so you get a notification of when I drop further videos. If you also like and share and comment on the video as well, that really helps with the algorithm and boosts exposure. And if you can support me, please do so. You can do with any of the avenues on the screen at the moment and below this video. You can support me for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon and every dollar helps. We need your support at the moment. We do not have an operating fourth estate. I'm sure you're aware uh, a functioning media holding power accountable is vital for democracy. At the moment, we haven't got it. So people like me are having to fill their shoes and do the job for them with your support. Thanks very much for your support. Till next time. Peace and take care.